Good morning. And welcome to Detroit Unity Temple where the opportunities and challenges of living meet the awesome, the wonderful, the divine power of God. So let's give God a hand right now for allowing us to be here in this wonderful, sacred space. We have a fantastic service plan for you. But we want to say thank you for anyone who's joining us via the internet, but all those of you who are in here right now, wave at somebody. Let them know how much you appreciate who they are. Give them a, let them know that God is with them in their most fantastic, beautiful place in this wonderful arena that we have that we call God. Truly, we know that God is with us because this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. So let us begin this moment with the reading of today's daily words. I'd like to invite up our very own, the Reverend Artel Gant. Today's word is renew. The affirmation is, I am sorted by the spirit of God within me. Renewal is part of the rhythm of daily life. Eating and drinking to nourish and replenish my body, resting to quiet my mind, and sleeping after a day of activity are all ways to renew myself. But sometimes those efforts aren't quite enough to sustain me. At times when I feel drained at depth, I may need spiritual renewal. God, the one presence and power, is always with me, but it is up to me to keep my awareness of God strong. When I awaken, I say a prayer of blessings for what the day will bring. Throughout the day, I feel God's presence all around me. When I prepare for sleep, I say a prayer of gratitude for all the day has brought. In God, I am renewed moment by moment, day by day. The scripture is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, and it reads, When we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen, for what can be seen is temporary, but what God, what cannot be seen is eternal. Amen. I want to read that one more time. We look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. Amen. Let us affirm our congregational mission statement. Our mission and goal is to prayerfully demonstrate the teachings of Jesus Christ through the study and practice of truth principles. Now let us affirm our vision statement for the Living Temple. We, the spiritual community of Detroit Unity, joyously carry out the vision of renewal and prosperity for ourselves, our spiritual home, and our world. This week's food for thought is, our life is shaped by our mind. We become what we think. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Artell. I like saying that, Reverend Artell. Yeah. <laughs> if this is your first time joining Detroit Unity Temple, we welcome you and encourage you to join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. for our in-person service. And be sure to sign our guest book located in the lobby. And if you are unable to come to service in person, watch us at any time by going to www.youtube.com forward slash Detroit Unity. And you know, it's a wonderful thing to be here in the house of the Lord. Amen. So right now, but I can feel this energy. I can feel this idea. You, you, you feel me? It's time for us to have a wonderful song. So let's give a hand to our very own Gwen and Charles Scale. I think that food, that food for thought was just perfect for this song. We all know it. So we sing it in our, our, our brains or just form the words with our mouths or hum. 
song, and they say that's why hummingbirds hum, because they can't remember the words. <laughs> Yes, we are. We are that power of the thinker. So we want to thank you for that wonderful musical selection, Ms. Gwen Harris. And right now, let us take a moment to affirm our statement of truth. Together, there's only one presence and one power active in my life and in the universe. God, the good, omnipotent. Now let us say our prosperity thought for the week. I live in a loving, abundant, harmonious universe, and I am grateful. Let's say that again and put the energy into grateful. I live in a loving, abundant, harmonious universe, and I am grateful. All right. <laughs> Now, let us prepare for our morning meditation by reflecting on the goodness of God and by singing the Lord's Prayer. It is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and leave us not in temptation but deliver us from at this time that we become comfortable in our seats. And we have a lot at this time to give you the opportunity to make preparation for what we are about to receive. And we know that the nostrils represent the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So thereby let us activate that inspiration by inhaling and exhaling there. Let us inhale and exhale, blow it out. Inhale. Exhale, blow it out. One more time, big inhale. And exhale, blow it out. As we prepare ourselves, we know that through the power of the spoken word, it gives us the opportunity to activate that God spark within us because it was Job that said, Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. And now we are decreeing, for we say we are now in the presence of pure being. Immersed in the Holy Spirit of love, life, and wisdom. We acknowledge thy presence and power, O blessed Spirit, in thy divine wisdom. We now erase our mortal limitations. And from thy pure substance of love, we bring our world into manifestation according to thy perfect law. For this moment we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen.
this song selection, I think goes perfectly with the wonderful lesson that you're going to hear today about what you see is what you get. I want to celebrate some Detroit artists. Yes. One of whom is my cousin. Okay. Mr. L.J. Reynolds. And when I think of this song, I think of the men of praise. <laughs> I gotta tell you something. I called them in the middle of the week. It must have been about Tuesday, right? Yeah, we were in Tampa. Yeah. <laughs> I said, Charles, I got an idea. Oh, I said, if, can you help me any? And Charles said, man, we down here performing. We're doing all this. I said, well, if, whatever. Let's leave it to God. So that's why I said, let's give them another hand. Yeah. Because they took it out of their, went out their way to make sure they could 
bring that song forward. And I had that song come forward because there's a metaphysical meaning into that song. But before I get centered, let me just center myself. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Show me thy ways, O Lord, and teach me thy paths. And lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Thank you, God. And I have to give God an honor who's the head of my life. I want to share with you the title of my lesson is What I See I Am, What I Think I Become. And I just want you to ponder on that for a second because it is so important how you see yourself. My scripture is taken from 1 Samuel 16, chapter 7, verse. The Lord does not look at things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Yes. Amen. All right. So once again, the title of my talk is What I See I Am what I think I become. And I just want you to ponder that because that's where we have to go. If you looked at the world today, your perception can be tarnished. Your ideas of the world can be in a very fearful place. I was speaking to a young man and I was asking him, he was roughly 18, about to graduate, or has graduated from high school on his way to college. And we started talking about the world, and he simply said, Reverend guys, I'm sort of concerned about the future, because what I see is all the destruction and all the concern he had about the Ukraine, about the fires. All that was embedded into his mind by how he see the world. Yes. And we had to have a long talk. Many of us know we can look into this mirror. When you look into your mirror at home, what do you see? Some would say, I heard the word reflection. A child of God. But whatever you see in this mirror is being seen by others at a deeper level. Wherever your consciousness is at, wherever your thoughts are at, that's where that perception goes, but it's critical because you're emitting a vibrational frequency of what you think. How that song says, what you think, or what you want, what you get. <laughs> there you go, get it. What you see is what you get. But we have to realize that if your mind is filled with lack, you'll be looking for lack in everything in your life. If your mind is filled with worry, you're gonna be looking for that in everything you see. Have you ever met someone who came out of a broken relationship and she had a hard time going into a loving relationship? Because what she remembered she couldn't break what she saw in that past relationship. Some of us have chains on our mind right now from previous experiences. Please remember, what you see, I am. So if you're not seeing love, it's because you haven't brought it out in you. You will see the things in other people that you were part of. You ever notice how some people keep finding the bad relationships? You ever notice how sometimes certain people want to run with the same crowd, always getting in trouble and they can't change that because they see nothing more in themselves. There's something called the law of attraction. You will attract to you what you see because you place it around the I am. I read a wonderful article by a Reverend Keith Miller who said this, the ability to see, to have spiritual perception. And he stated something, I just pulled some parts out. 
He said, the Lord empowers us by the Holy Spirit to have eyes to see. We are in a time when every believer needs to function in the ability to see, to have spiritual perception. Lord empowers us by the Holy Spirit to have eyes to see. I'm praying for you to have increase in your ability to see for your life, for your family, and for your destiny in Christ, for others around you, for the city, the regional impact, and for the kingdom building. I pray you will see with greater clarity so you may be a wiser master builder according to his blueprints. Yes. Some of us, we can't get past our own issues to see the good that's already growing around us. Some of us have to find it by first finding it within yourself. His article continues to say, spiritual, he said, we are living in challenging, changing times and experiencing greater challenges. But there is good news. We do not have to peer through the lens of adversity or hard times darkly. Neither should we grope our way through hardships, veering off to the highway of destiny or even engage survival modes in these times. Rather, we can stand strong and brave because as the spirit-filled believers, we have God-given eyes to see through the night what others cannot. Sometimes you hear us using the term metaphysicians. As a metaphysician, we learn to see through the darkness and to be able to see the light. Amen? The Apostle Paul says, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporal, but what is unseen is eternal. When I ask you, can you really see God? How do you determine you're seeing God? What does God look like? Interesting question, isn't it? Depending on your grounded base of information. Because if you're going to say he looked like me or you, we missed the mark. God is a divine presence that encompasses. That's like, if I ask someone, can you describe the entirety of the universe? Can you? <laughs> There's no way. There's no way. But you have a clue if you look inside yourself. The metaphysical meaning of perception Spiritual apprehension. It means apprehension of truth through intuition, the ability to perceive spiritually the faculty of seeing spiritual reality in spite of appearances, in spite of appearances. And that may suggest the contrary. If you looked at the world today, many of us want to check out. Many of us want to give up because we think we're on an endless cycle, but it's designed to lift you up. I had spoke with my brother, and he said, we have to remember that fire is a cleansing process. Yes. Some of us have to understand that we are in a special, unique time period like never before. Yes. All around us, we're seeing things we have never seen before, and now the question is, how are you going to see it? Are you going to stay trapped in it? Keith Miller once stated in his article, he said, the measure of adversity we face today is great, but it is also indicative of the incredible opportunity available to believers. Today we do not have the blindly called things, called, we do not have blindly called things forth and wish with all of our might that these things will happen. Rather, we can see through the tough stuff and the climate of the day to actual solutions. Can you see through the tough stuff? When it get hard and you feel like you can't go on, can you see your way through it? It says some of which have not yet been discovered, those solutions, to see the incredible plans and opportunities of God, you and I have an advantage. Our advantage is in our spiritual sight which by reason of use and, of course, the perception of the Holy Spirit, we can learn to see through our circumstances into ways we may never have been seen before. 
Can you imagine those individuals back in 1865 and they were told, you're free! How they had to have a perception like never before. Some of them would say, well, we're free? <laughs> you mean I can leave this good house? <laughs> but there's a fear that could have crept in. But some of them decided to make this their greatest advantage. I spoke to a lady who was going through the depressions of the 30s, and she talked to me about how they didn't have much at all. Have you ever talked to somebody on how they got through the depression? They couldn't find work. They didn't have welfare. They had to make things. They had to see through that. They had to find a way through it. Spiritual eyesight gives an advantage to metaphysicians to see in the heavenly realm what unbelievers cannot see. We look at the world with our natural eyes, but with our spiritual eyes. We look at the kingdom of God. And I want to share something with you, with a quote from Buddha. He says, our life is shaped by our minds. We become what we think. Suffering follows an evil thought as the wheels of a cart follows the ox that draws it. Our life is shaped by our mind. We become what we think. Joy follows a pure thought like a shadow that never leaves. Think about that. Our life is shaped by our mind. Do you have the ability to look into the mirror and to see your mind and what goes through there? Because some of us don't want others to know our thoughts. Am I right or wrong? Raise your hand if that's true. <laughs> you see, Emily Cady states, bondage or liberty which? You know, she was talking about that ability to be free from the things that hold you captive, free from the things that keep us in bondage. Because to be totally free, you have to see yourself as being free. You have to walk like that. You have to stand like that, knowing that something inside of you is greater than deeper than anybody will ever know. But if you haven't touched base with the Christ presence, if what you see has been beaten down so you don't even want to look up, some people don't want to raise their head up. You ever seen a person like that? They don't want to raise their head. They, we will, let me slow down for a moment. Years ago, African Americans were always taught to hold your head down when you walk in front of certain people. You had to walk like this. Because when you raise up and you look somebody in the eyes, that will give somebody more fear than anything you ever, ever imagined. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Because if they see the God in your eyes, if they see that strength there, whatever you do to them, they will know that you stand on that pillar of strength that God is. Yes. What I see, I am. And I have to see it in others. You see, when we're afraid to see rightly, we can change the world by seeing the world differently. You can consider this the law of attraction, the secret, or anything else, but it's not magic, it's the science of the brain. A gentleman by the name of Nightingale takes it one step further than Buddha, saying that whatever we think most of the times, that's what truly shapes our minds. Amen. We have a challenge with a lot of our young people, they'll play more video games than they do studying or reading or focusing in on their spirituality. Am I right or wrong? Amen. They'll be great at it. But if they're not taught to develop a spiritual presence, if you're not demonstrating, did you hear me? What they see in us will help them to demonstrate for them what this reality is. So we have a unique perspective. When you look into the mirror, it doesn't lie what your thoughts will see. Mm -hmm. The mirror will reflect your insecurities. The mirror will reflect how much confidence you have. The mirror will allow you to know the God in you. So if you look in that mirror and you see the personality, you're looking wrongly. If you look in that mirror, 
Have you ever tried to stare into your own eyes? Something I want you to try. Yes. Look in the mirror and stare into your own eyes. Because you'll find something unique will take place. You will find that you may not be able to stare there long, and then you may actually see one of your ancestors standing by you, standing around you. That's powerful, isn't it? Yes, it is. You see, what I want you to remember is when you think painful, negative, shameful thoughts most of the time, you will struggle to find the positive and even positive outer experiences. Have you ran across a person and all they want to bring to you is what, what's going wrong in their life? And if through the whole conversation, they don't say one thing positive. Have you ever been around a group of people and all they want to do is fuss? Complain. Lord Jesus, it's so going wrong. I need to get it out of here. I don't need to be with that man or that woman. I die, 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 die. Listen. The Holy Spirit is in all of God's people, available by this divine power to help us see what we otherwise cannot see and what those in bondage cannot see. The Apostle Paul explained it to the Corinthians this way, but even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose mind, who minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe least the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, shall shine on them. You have to realize what this is all about. Once again, the title of my lesson is What I See I Am, What I Think I Become. Yes. You have to be able to see your world and your life changing. It alters your body structure. It alters who you are. I am what I think I become. I see prosperity because I am prosperity. I see health because I am health. I see love because I am love. Yes. There was a statement that says, remember that movie in the Avatar? Mm -hmm. And they would say, I see you. Mm -hmm. They weren't talking about the physical presence they were talking about the spiritual presence. Yes. I see you. Have someone ever done something so great, so profound, so from the heart, and you looked at them and they, they just showed you something that they had that you never saw before, and you tell them, I see you. I see you, Reverend David. I see you, Thomas. I see you, Peter. I see you, Artel. You have to see inside that person, yes. but hear me out. You will not see nothing that is not in you. Amen. So if you're only seeing their stuff, their mistakes, guess where that comes from? You. It's your mistakes. What you see is what you get. Yes. That's why I love that song. What you see is what you get. Some people, <laughs> as far as I can go. <laughs> Listen, when Jesus came to a place called Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he paused for a moment and said, but what about you? Who do you say I am? He's really asking, who do you see I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, yes. the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it, and I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosened in heaven. And then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah, because he wants them to have their aha moment, that discovery. 
Eric Butterworth said, discover the power within you. Let's go back to that statement for a moment. Peter had to see the Christ in Jesus. Understand that Jesus was a man of great knowledge and great effort, but until Peter was able to see the Christ in him. Have you ever been around a person where you saw the Christ in them? You can't see what you don't have. You, can, you may see it in degrees, but to see the fullness of who they are, you have to have it being reflected in you. The more you see it in yourself, the more you'll be able to see it in other people. Amen? Amen. Amen. When we began to address that with each other, we will go and grow further than we will ever know. But you have to have something inside of you called faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report through faith. We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that, we, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. When you look at the news, be careful how you're framing it. Yeah. Don't frame it and lock it in. But you need to take awareness and move into your spiritual perception because it's going to take all of us to move this energy out the way. I'm going to say something that's very important. If we all are seeing the good in those around us, yes. if you're seeing the good in your neighbor, if you're seeing the good in your fellow brothers and sisters, it moves the energy. It moves the cloud. You ever notice how when a storm comes in, they say the wind shifted yeah. and the storm went elsewhere. We have to ask ourselves in our own conscious awareness, where is that storm at? Can you shift it? Can you move it out the way? Can you move that negative thinking out the way so you can be empowered? Can you light your own candle? Another quote from Buddha says, all that we are is the result of what we have thought. The mind is everything. What we think, we become. Say it with me. What we think, we become. That song that says, I am the thinker, yeah. thinks the thought. Yeah. Hear me out. Watch your thoughts. Yeah. Watch those moments you in a closet by yourself. You don't think nobody hear your thoughts. And you let some wicked energy come up and start changing the way you think. And you know you shouldn't. You should have said, cancel that thought within yourself. So you have the responsibility of lifting yourself up into your God presence. You have the responsibility of elevating yourself. It's not going to come from nobody. Some people may inspire you, but when it's coming down to the rooted responsibility is yours. Stand as men and women of God. There was an article in what was called Scientific American Minds and they explored the worlds of sensory illusions and delve into how they fool the brain. The word illusions derived from the Latin illuder to mock, whereas the word itself has rooted, has its rootedness in the 14th century Anglo-French meaning an act of deception. That's because our brain, not our eyes, is the final arbiter of truth. We are wired to analyze the constant flood of information from our sense and organs that input into a rational interpretation of our world. Much of the time, our brain decodes these signals correctly, but illusions derail the process. Let me explain that. You ever know when you, were, you knew something was wrong and you did it anyway? Because you were following how you were feeling and you created the illusion yeah. that it's all right. I'm going to storm the Capitol on January the 6th because I think it's all right. Because yeah. somebody told me in my senses thought I should do that, knowing it was wrong. If you ever been inside of a mob, been inside of a group of people, it could be your own family, and somebody will start talking about somebody. And you automatically just start joining in. Yeah. There's an illusion taking place. You lock in as, as your reality. 
but it's not. And then you have this chemicalization because you know it's not right. And you wonder when you got away from that circle of friends, why did I say that? Why did I do that? Too late. You allow yourself to be trapped. It says, but illusions derail the process. Although our sensation may seem to be accurate, our perceptions are not. Some illusions adaptation help us to survive. Some of us being able to recognize the same object outside in the bright sun or in the dimly light room. Despite the difference in brilliancy, a wavelength of light source, others just trick us. Illusions are both intriguing and fun. Some people like to be tricked, don't they? You ever found somebody who you can say, oh, you know you can trick them. Tell them anything, they'll, walk, they'll run with it. It's out a gossip chain. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I want to share this with you. It is so important. The metaphysical meaning of vision, spiritual vision means seeing God as the foundation of all sources of all and the substance of all. Seeing the good, the true, and the beautiful everywhere in this manner is the eye single and the vision perfected. In John, third chapter, third verse, he says, Truly, truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he or she is born again. Do you understand that born again means you're not going to come out the womb again. It means you're going to have a change of consciousness where you let go of those things blocking you from understanding the Christ presence. See, we are spiritual beings right here, right now. There was a quote of Michael Jackson that says, we can make a change in the world. Together we can help stop racism. Together we can help stop prejudices. We can help the world live without fear. It is our only hope. And without that hope, we are lost. And that's why I truly love that song. <laughs> that some people are made of plastics and some people are made of wood. And some people have a heart of stone and some people are no good. But baby, I'm for real. <laughs> I'm as real as real can get. And if you're looking, I'm going to say, a God presence, then what you see is what you get. We got to understand that. What you're projecting to the world, others see the truth. Don't live an illusion thinking something is not. I'm going to come to this point. Eric Butterworth said, man is not in the world to set it right, but to see it right. Amen. Let me say that again. Man is not in the world to set it right, but to see it right. Yes. And when you start seeing, seeing it right, you start seeing the truth in all things. A gentleman by the name of Frank Whitney said this, I behold the Christ in you. Here the life of God I see. I can see a great peace too. I can see you whole and free. I behold the Christ in you. I can see this as you walk. I see this in all you do. I can see this as you talk. I behold God's love express. I can see you filled with power. I see you ever blessed. See the Christ in you, hour by hour. I behold the Christ in you. I can see that perfect one, led by God in all you do. I can see the Christ, the God in you, and know that the work is done. Brothers and sisters, I want us to remember this idea of this talk, what I see, I am, what I think, I become. God bless you. What you see is what you get. Uh, one of these days I'm going to sing it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Gwen, you're going to have me out here one day singing, right? <laughs> Let us take this moment right now as we prepare to bless and be blessed 
through our tithes and offerings, and let us affirm our prosperity prayer together. Divine love in and through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. And please know that your tithes and donations can be made through Givelify app, PayPal, by mail, by phone, or in person. But together we prosper. So right now, let's have another song by our very own Gwen and Charles Scales. Yes, and on that note, let's, we said we, we thought about, we were thinking, I am the thinker, what you see is what you get. Yeah. So let's elevate our minds, because Reverend Guy said that in his thing, about elevating your mind, okay? So that's where we're gonna go right now. Let's give Reverend Guy another round of applause. That was, I like that, keeping it real. You know, just, that's what we call keeping it real. That's why unity has been so important in my life for so many years, since I was two. <laughs> <laughs> So I started to let God lead the way, glorifying my spirit every day. And I'm thankful my blessings I can see. I'm living like a whole new world. There's a difference in me. Don't try to do it yourself. Don't do it by yourself. Let the love fill your heart. Let it fill your heart so you can start. So you can start. Start living it up. Elevate your mind. Give it it up. Leave the past behind. Start living it up. Come on and take the higher ground. And start a new beginning with this love that you can find. I'm so happy. I got love inside my heart, cause I found out that that's what life's about. I'm celebrating. Oh, it's a brand new day, cause I'm living and I'm giving in a whole new holy way. You have a light. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Come on and keep that love in your heart, in your heart. So you can start, so you can start. Where we going? Start living it up. Elevate your mind, giving it up. Come on. Leave the past behind. Start living it up. Come on, take the higher ground and start a new beginning with this love that you have found. Start living it up. What? How you living? How you living? Giving it up.
Taking the higher ground Giving it up I'm leaving the past behind So living it up Celebrating a new day Starting a new beginning With love this way I got a shoe pop in my walk I got a lot of die in my talk I'm living I'm living Higher and higher 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 yeah. Giving it up Giving it up I'm living I think I, I got James with I'm living, I'm living. Everybody put your finger up where we going. Up, up, up. higher, it up. higher, higher. Living it up. Gwen and Charles Scales. Living it up higher. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Oh, what a wonderful song. I did a wonderful collection of songs today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right now, I'd like to bring up a person who's going to bring to us our this week's announcements, our very own Mr. Peter Mason. Thank you, Rich. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Right. Yeah, the Christ in me, grace to Christ in you. Yeah. And I just want to say again, thank you so much, Rev, yeah. for that powerful message, that powerful lesson. And before I go on, I'd like to have Latia come up. She has an announcement for us. Please, Latia. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Today in the tre Treasure Chest Bookstore, we will have London's Accessory Closet. London Accessory Closet has a variety of bracelets, great for the upcoming holidays. We have a special selection of Divine Nine bracelets. Come check out London's Accessory Closet. And guess what? The owner is our very own Unitine London Porter. Donations are welcome. Sign the momager. Thank you. Thank you, Latia. Thank you so much. The Treasure Chest Bookstore's pop-up series continues with London's accessory closet, as you just talked about, the day after the service. One of our very own Unitines, London Port, will be selling, again, a variety of those handmade, handmade bracelets. Is this the year that you have been waiting for to become a Detroit Unity Temple board member? I know it is. So, now is the time to seriously start thinking about it. Get on board meetings will be held in the very near future for members wishing to fill the four positions that will be vacant in November. The first Sunday in August. The first Sunday in August. Okay, thank you. So if this is you, we'd like for you to consider getting on board. More information is forthcoming. Tidying the Temple Week is Monday, July 24th through Thursday, July 27th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. each day. We'll be cleaning the fellowship kitchen, storage room, and pantry, as well as the children's church and classroom one. The Christmas room and green room, in addition to outside the church. If you would like to volunteer, please reach out to the church office at 313-345-4848. Next Sunday will be the Urban Suburban Interfaith Picnic at Palmer Park. This year's picnic will be in conjunction with DEON, which stands for Detroit Interfaith Outreach Network, and People for Palmer Park. Old and new friends come together and break bread from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. See the flyer in the lobby for additional information. Registration will begin next week. This week. This week. Yeah. All right, registration will begin this week. Thanks again, Rep. It's that time of your Arise Detroit is back Saturday, August 5th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Bring the family and kids out to everything free. I repeat that, everything free. Yeah. School supplies, face painting, ice cream truck, resource tables, free books, and much more. As they rev up for the August 5th neighborhood back to school event, 
HDCC is requesting donations of school supplies such as notebooks, pens and pencils, book bags, paper. They will be accepting donations at the temple from now through Wednesday, August the 2nd. Get ready for circulation day. It's, time, it's that time of year where our Detroit Unity family comes together to share clean, gently used clothes, small electronics, shoes, kitchenware, toys, and more. Bring these items in for this free community giveaway. Saturday, August 5th, 2023 from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Drop-off date, drop dates are Sunday, July 30th from 11.30 a.m to 12.30 p.m. and Monday, July 31st through Thursday, August the 3rd from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. If you would like to volunteer, call the church office at 313-345-4848. Join the prayer chaplains in the Fred Robertson family room after the day's Sunday service. Spend a little extra time in prayer. Join the Monday night prayer circle every Monday, evening at 6 p.m. on Zoom. Log in to Reverend David Stubbs' uh, Zoom class, Prosperity, every Thursday evening from 6 to 7.30 p.m. The class book, Prosperity, is available in the Treasure Chest bookstore here at Detroit Unity Temple. Email your August birthdays and anniversaries to dutreception at gmail.com by 9.30 on Monday, July 31st. Next Sunday is Picnic Day. This year, our DUT picnic is a part of a joint effort with the people at Palmer Park. Detroit Interfaith Network, AKA also known as Dion, which I talked about a little earlier, and many others. To, to form the Urban Interfaith Picnic, uh, to form the Interfaith Picnic. Fun will be had by all, as old and new friends come together and break bread from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. The picnic is free, as I said earlier. Uh, please see Carmen Collier in the lobby to pick up a flyer and to register so that we will have an estimated head count. All donations are greatly appreciated. And then there's one other announcement and I have some very good news to say. Thanks to all your generosity, we have exceeded our goal of 80 new chairs for the Margaret Wood Auditorium. So what does that mean? We will place another order for additional chairs next week. If you submitted a contribution sheet but have not yet paid, or if you still wish to purchase a chair, please do so by the end of business on Tuesday, July 25th. Thank you all, and have a great remainder of the day. That's it for my announcement. Thank you. All right, thank you, Peter. Thank you very much. Let me go over a few things that Peter said and put some emphasis around it. Let me go straight to at urban, suburban, community summer gathering, which will be the largest interfaith gathering that's going to take place here in Palmer Park. When we first began this journey, we were talking about charging $10 a family or $5 first, person, that's over. We're not going to do that. What we want for you to do is just be there with us because the church is going to cover costs for food, the church is going to cover the cost for some of our drinks, and the other community groups are bringing up other items that's going to be available, but we will take your donations to help cover the costs of the church on current expense. If you'd like to donate five or ten dollars, whatever you feel like to help others, please do so. Carmen is in the lobby, but there's going to be face paintings, games, and it's going to be right over there by the Splash Park, and it's going to be, and you'll get a chance to even see our youth garden that's right over there by there. And so let's make this an exciting time. And I always have to say this, Mr. Terry Packer has donated a tent. You will be able to know our tent. He donated a tent that will have on it Detroit Unity Temple with our logo. It will be right out there. And we also will have a larger tent. So that day, we're going we're gonna to go over there and make sure we get in our tent and have just a good time and just enjoy ourselves. Those who want to play bid with us, I know there's some bid with players around here play checkers or chess, but the idea is we're going to show to the community how Detroit Unity Party, yes. how we go out and have so much fun a day. Amen. <laughs> the other thing I'd like to share with you is next week there will be the first 
get on board meeting, and I want you to really take, pay attention for that for anyone who's going to be a part of that. But also, circulation day. Many of us got things in our closets we need to circulate. <laughs> I'm going to be bringing some stuff in because we want to share with our community. And I got to tell you something else we're doing you may not know of. We gave away 20 boxes of food last week that was a part. The people for Palmer Park and Eastern Market contacted us and said, do we know people in our community who would like to receive these boxes of food? And we're going to do it again this week and for the next eight weeks. So contact me or someone. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters in the neighborhood, I personally went and delivered to them four boxes, and a lady, one of the sisters wanted to cry, who received it. You know, I don't think people see Detroit Unity Temple, who we are. We have to start seeing ourselves yes. as this agent of God yes. working in our community. Circulation Day, giving out books and free books and school supplies to our community. We have to start seeing the good that's right here moving through us, as us, in this community, because we're doing something to make a difference. So we want you to be a part of it. I'm not going to get on my soapbox because I already preached, but I just want you to know how exciting it is when you see the love that's being poured out to members of our community from Detroit Unity Temple. We have a great spiritual community. Amen. Amen. So now, let us just take a moment as we get ready to close by saying, you to grab my stuff. Oh. <laughs> so let us say the prayer that we always say at the end of each service. We know, wait, I got one more thing I gotta do. Martel, Martel, come here. She just competed at the nationals Junior Olympus, Olympics in track and field. She haven't been at church because she's been competing. And last week when the other graduates were receiving their award, her mother had to step in for her. I said, no, 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 your mother can't do that. Would you like to share what you've been doing very quickly? Hi. <laughs> Um, I was in Las Vegas at West Coast Junior Olympics. I competed in 100 hurdles and 400 hurdles. I got second in 100 hurdles and fourth in 400 hurdles. You say thank you. Okay. Um, I would like to say thank you to Miss Latia and Mrs. and Mr. Calhoun for always supporting me. And I would say thank you to the church for praying for me and supporting me. No, wait, wait. What do you do before every race? I meditate and pray before every race. <laughs> Thank you. That's the good that's going on in Detroit Unity Temple. Yeah. So we, we need to celebrate the good that takes place. I mean, we have some good young people like Kayla and what she's doing and all her efforts. I mean, we got greatness up right here in our own midst. <laughs> now. Please join us in Unity Worldwide Ministries everywhere as we pray and believe the following prayer. We know that God is a love that has no end and a power that knows no bounds. God's healing power of divine life is restoring, healing, and revitalizing our world in this very moment. We let go of any fears of anxiety and we affirm that all are safe, healthy, and protected. We bless all those who support us in maintaining vibrant, radiant health. We express divine life in all we think, say, and do. We bless our global family with radiant health, peace of mind, and abundant love. So as we bring our service to a close, I would like to take a moment to give a heartfelt thank you to everyone that has continued to support us with your tithes and offerings. We truly cannot do what we do here without you. Our goal is to go forth and spread the love, light, and teachings of Jesus Christ. So please remember to invite your friends and families to join our 10 a.m. Sunday service in person or to watch the playback at noon and simply log on to www.detroitunity.com and, and go directly to the YouTube channel and we go, as we go forward. And I'd like to say, if there's anyone new who haven't been here before, would you please stand?
All right, and everyone here is family. <laughs> so now let us stand as we sing our prayer for protection and our peace song. wonderful Sunday everyone please check in with Carmen at the back and sign up for our wonderful interfaith community gathering or picnic as we say.